Now, we have discussed how to uh, encode the number of hidden layers, the number of neurons to be present in the each of the hidden layers that is the topology or the architecture of the network and how to encode the connecting weights, the coefficient of transfer function, the bias values inside that particular the G A string. So, ultimately the G A string is going to carry information, the complete information of the neural network. That means, it will carry the information related to topology, it will carry the information related to the connecting weights, then the information related to the bias value, the coefficient of transfer function. So, this particular G S string is going to carry the whole information of this particular the network and we are going to take the help of the batch mode of training to optimize or to evolve this particular the network. Now, this shows actually one flow chart or the schematic view like how does it work. Now, let me explain with the help of this particular flow chart the working principle of this genetic neural system. Now, as I told that genetic algorithm is nothing but a population based approach. So, I have got a population size n and this particular population of solutions are generated at random. Supposing that the first solution is something like this, this is a binary coded j, the second solution is something like this and the last solution is something like this. Now, if I concentrate on E particular the G A string that is the first G A string, it will carry the full information or the whole information of this particular the network. Now, let us see how to implement the batch mode of training for this type of the network. So, I am just going to discuss the batch mode of training of this particular uh, the network. Now, G A starts with a population of solution and we create the initial population at random, we put generation is equals to 0. Now, here we have got a check the generation whether it is uh, greater than equals to the maximum number of generations. Now, if it is yes that is the end of the algorithm and if it is no, so we concentrate on the first G S T that means, we are going to concentrate on the the first G S T and we put G S T equals to 0 and here there is another check whether the G S T is greater than the population size. Now, if it is no, then we start with the training case that is the first training case. Supposing that we have got some training scenarios and the total number of training scenarios let me consider I have got capital L number of training scenarios. Now, E particular training scenario carries information of the input and your the output. Similarly, we have got capital L number of training scenarios. Now, corresponding to the first G S string, so we are going to concentrate on the training cases or the training scenarios. Now, here so corresponding to the first G S string my neural network is ready and I am passing all the training scenarios one after another. For example, say here I have got a check where the training scenario or the case is greater than the maximum case that is the maximum number of training scenario. Now, if it is no then we calculate the output of the neural network. So, as I told that this particular neural network is indicated by so this particular the G A string. So, we will be getting the output of this particular network and we use case equals to case plus 1. That means, I am just going to pass all the training scenarios one after another. The moment it satisfies so this particular condition. Okay. So, what we do is we calculate the fitness of the your the G A string. That means, 
after passing all the training scenarios, all capital L training scenarios, we try to consider the fitness, we try to calculate the fitness of this particular the G A string. And supposing that the fitness of the G A string is denoted by F 1. And so, here we have got G A string equals to G A string plus 1. That means, we go for the second G A string. That means, we are going to concentrate on this particular your the second G A string. And once again for this particular your the second G A string. So, my network is ready once again we will pass all the training scenarios and we will be getting. So, this particular F 2 and this particular process will go on and go on and the moment it reaches this particular the criteria that is G A string is greater than the, the population size. That means, your the fitness information for the whole population is ready for us. That means, we have got the fitness information that is F 1, F 2 up to your F n. And once you have got the fitness information for the whole population, now we are going to modify. So, this particular the population of solutions using the operators like reproduction, crossover and mutation. Now, the principle of reproduction, crossover and mutation. So, those things actually uh, I have discussed in some of the earlier lecture. Now, so this particular process will go on and go on and this will complete actually one iteration or one generation of this particular G A and G A through a large number of iteration will try to find out your some optimal design of these particular the networks. And as I told that there is a possibility that you will be getting multiple solutions that means, the multiple optimal neural networks and uh, you can use any one out of these multiple optimal neural networks for uh, predicting the input output relationship. Now, this is the way actually the genetic neural system works, the working principle of this genetic algorithm, uh, genetic neural system uh, uh, we have already discussed. And now, actually, what we are going to do, we are going to solve one numerical example just to make it more clear. Now, here I am just going to solve one numerical example and we are going to uh, solve this numerical example and I am going to give the statement of this numerical example. A binary coded genetic algorithm is used to update the connecting words coefficient of transfer function of a neural network as shown below. So, this is actually a very simple network having say three layers input layer, hidden layer and output layer. So, on the input layer there are two neurons, on the hidden layer there are three neurons and the output layer there is one neuron. So, this is nothing but actually a 2, 3, 1 fully connected uh, the network and let us see how to optimize. So, this particular your network with the help of a binary coded genetic algorithm. Now, the rest of the statement of the problem is as follows. The neurons of the input and hidden layer and output layers are assumed to have transfer function of the form y equals to x that is the linear transfer function for the input layer y equals to 1 divided by 1 plus e raise to the power minus a 1 x that is nothing but is your the log sigma transfer function for the the hidden layer and y equals to e raise to the power a 2 x minus e raise to the power minus a 2 x divided by e raise to the power a 2 x plus e raise to the power minus a 2 x. So, this is actually the tan sigmoid transfer function and the connecting words v and w we are going to vary in the range of 0 to 1. 
the bias value will vary in the range of 0 0.001 to 0 0.01 and the coefficient of transfer function that is a 1 a 2 are going to vary in the range of 0 0.5 to say 2.0. Now, we are going to show one training scenario and for this particular training scenario actually we will have to find out what should be the output and that output we will have to compare with the target output just to find out the deviation in prediction. Now, the training scenario as I told is something like this and the training scenario is nothing but the input output relationship. Now, there are L capital L of training scenarios the out of that the first one is as follows if i 1 is 0 0.6 and i 2 is 0 0.7 then output is 0 0.9. So, this is nothing but is your the input output relationship known input output relationship. Now, if you concentrate on the G A string the G A string will carry information of this particular network that means, your these 2 3 1 neural network and it is having the fixed architecture and we are going to use 1 2 3 4 5 5 bits to represent each of these particular the design variables. For example, 5 bits are used to represent v 1 1 the next 5 bits are used to represent v 1 2 and so on. So, this particular G S string is going to carry a uh, the, the full information or the whole information of a fixed architecture uh, that is 2 3 1 neural network. And as I told that our aim is to determine the deviation in prediction. So, for this particular the training scenario. Now, let us see how to find out. So, that particular your the deviation in prediction. Now, to determine the deviation in prediction. So, what you will have to do is the first thing you will have to find out the corresponding to this particular G S string. So, you will have to find out the decoded value. For example, say if I just want to find out the decoded value corresponding to this particular your the 5 bits which are used to represent the V 1 1. So, this is nothing but 1 0 1 1 0 the place values are as follows 2 raise to the power 0, 2 raise to the power 1, 2 raise to the power 2, 2 raise to the power 3, 2 raise to the power 4 and the decoded value is nothing but 1 multiplied by 2 raise to the power 4 plus 1 multiplied by 2 raise to the power 2 plus 1 multiplied by 2 raise to the power 1. Now, this is nothing but is your 16 this is nothing but is your 4 and this is 2. So, this is nothing but is your 22. So, the decoded value corresponding to this 5 bits used to represent V 1 1 is nothing but is your 22. And once you have got the decoded value now we can find out the linear mapping rule. Uh, we can use the linear mapping rule to find out the real value corresponding to that binary substring. Now, what we do is now we have already discussed the decoded value of that and we know the range the range is nothing but 0 0.0 to 1.0. So, using the the linear mapping rule which I have already discussed the linear mapping rule. So, we can find out the real value corresponding to this V 1 1. So, V 1 1 is nothing but V 1 1 minimum that is your 0 0.0 plus V 1 1 maximum that is your 1.0 minus V 1 1 minimum that is nothing but is your 0 0.0 divided by 2 raise to the power L. L is nothing but your number of bits used to represent that is 2 raise to the power 5 minus 1 multiplied by the decoded value. Now, if I just write down this rule that is V 1 1 
is nothing but V11 minimum plus your V11 maximum minus V11 minimum 2 raised to the power L minus 1 multiplied by the decoded value. So, this is nothing but the linear mapping rule. Now, here small l is nothing but is your 5 because we are using 5 bits to represent V11. So, very easily uh, we can substitute all the numerical values and we can find out what should be the real value corresponding to your V11. Now, the same principle actually we can use to find out the decoded value and the real value for each of the, the, the variables. Now, for this particular V11, so I have already discussed like how to find out actually the real value. Now, you follow the same principle to find out the real values for each of these particular connecting words V11, then 1, 2, 1, 3, V21, V22, V23, W11, W21 and W31. And we can find out their corresponding real values. So, we can find out their corresponding real values. Okay. Now, the range for your this particular A1 that is the coefficient of transfer function for your the log sigmoid transfer function. Now, here the range is 0 0.5 to 2.0 and once again by following the same principle you can find out what should be the real value. Similarly, corresponding to A 2 I can find out the real value for B I look can find out the real value and the range for B is nothing but 0 0.001 to 0 0.01. So, I can find out the real values for each of these particular your the variables and once you have got the real values so, my network is ready and once this particular network is made ready, now I can pass actually your the training scenario that is your the known input output relationship. For example, if I pass the set of inputs, I will be getting the output. Let us see how does it work. It is very simple. So, this I O 1 that is nothing but the output of the first neuron lying on the input layer is nothing but is your I I 1 that is the input of the first neuron lying on the input layer plus B is the bias value. And if we just substitute the numerical values, so I will be getting this I O 1. Similarly, I will be getting I O 2 that is the output of the second neuron lying on the input layer is nothing but the input of the second neuron lying on the input layer plus bias value and if you substitute the numerical values. So, it will be getting this as I O 2 and once you have got this particular thing. So, now actually very easily I can find out. So, what should be the your the input of your the hidden neurons. So, this your H I 1 that is the input of the first neuron lying on the hidden layer and I am also adding some bias value B. So, I will be getting so this H I 1 is nothing but I O 1 multiplied by V 1 1 plus I O 2 multiplied by V 2 1 plus the bias value is nothing but this. So, I will be getting this particular your the input. Now, similarly I can find out the input of the neuron second neuron lying on the hidden layer plus bias value. I can also find out the input of the third neuron lying on the hidden layer plus bias value and once you have got this particular the inputs of the hidden neurons then using that the transfer function. So, very easily I can find out what should be the output. Now, so this H O 1 is nothing but the output of the first neuron lying on the hidden layer. Then comes your H O 2 
is the output of the second neuron lying in the hidden layer and that is coming to be equal to 0 0.791418. Similarly, this H O 3 that is the output of the third neuron lying on the hidden layer and this is coming equal to be uh, your 0 0.65 uh, then 0 0.545. And once you have got your the output of your the hidden neurons. So, very easily we can find out what should be the input uh, of the neuron lying on the output layer. So, this O i 1 is nothing but the input of the first neuron lying on the output layer and we are adding the bias value and this O i 1 is nothing but H O 1 multiplied by W 1 1 H O 2 multiplied by W 2 1, H O 3 multiplied by W 3 1 plus B. And if you substitute the numerical values, so we will be getting the numerical values something like this. And this is nothing but the input of your the output layer. And on the output layer, we have got some transfer function. So, using that, so very easily we can find out what is your O O 1 that is nothing but the output of the first neuron lying on the output layer and we can use this your the tan sigma transfer function and you will be getting the calculated output is nothing but 0 0.981265. Now, this calculated output we will have to compare with the target output and this target output is nothing but is your 0 0.9 and we can find out uh, the deviation in prediction is nothing but 0 0.9 minus 0 0.981265. Uh, so, this is actually nothing but the, the deviation. So, the deviation is coming to be negative here. So, deviation is minus 0 0.08 1 2 6 5. Now, this is what happens after passing actually the first training scenario. Similarly, we are going to pass the second training scenarios, third training scenarios and all capital L training scenarios we are going to pass one after another. Now, this particular deviation it could be either positive or negative. And that is why actually what we do is we try to consider the mod value of this particular your deviation and the mod value of this deviation will be positive. So, for each of these particular the training scenarios or the training cases we will be getting some deviation and then we find out what should be the average deviation and that particular average deviation will be the fitness of the GA and as we discussed that for each of the, the GA string, if we can find out the fitness information, now we can use the operators like reproduction crossover and mutation and GA uh, through a large number of iterations will try to uh, actually evolve. So, that particular network, so which can predict the input output relationship in a very accurate way. Now, if you see the reference like whatever we have discussed on genetic neural system, uh, the same thing has been uh, discussed in detail in the textbook of this particular course, soft computing fundamentals and applications written by me. So, this is the reference for this genetic neural system. And, uh, now, to conclude or to summarize whatever we have discussed, we have discussed the principle of the genetic neural system whose main purpose is to evolve a suitable neural network which can predict the input output relationship of a process very accurately. Now, the working principle we discussed in details and after that we have solved one numerical example to make it uh, more clear and uh, 
I hope that you have understood the working principle of genetic neural system and by solving the numerical example. So, this particular concept uh, has become more clear. Thank you.